Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Yesterday, I filmed a water and perlite propagation video. Basically showed you everything that I'm currently propagating. And in that video, there was a few cuttings that had a, a pretty good root system that uh, definitely outgrown this box. So it is eviction day for some of these cuttings. So I'll be taking them out of the perlite and potting them up in some soil. So basically, you're just going to tag along and watch me pot up some plants. So let's get started. So I think the cuttings that are going to go are this uh, Alocasia Silver Dragon, my uh, Diefenbachia Sterling. Uh, I think that's pretty much it from that pot. Uh, this Hoya Polynera right there, as well as these Carnosa cuttings and this uh, Parasitical Heartleaf uh, Hoya cutting here as well. It's got some pretty decent roots. So these are the ones that are on the uh, chopping block for today. Gonna be potting these up and here is the mix that I use. This is a pro mix. It's just a regular potting mix and then this is the pro mix uh, orchid bark or orchid mix. It's got a bunch of like chunky bark and then it's got some charcoal and perlite. So I just like to mix these two together just to make a nice kind of chunky mixture. And I use this for my tropicals as well as my Hoyas. So I'm gonna take this Alocasia Silver Dragon out. You can see it's got some really nice roots. It's got some long roots. I'm just gonna use this uh, smaller orchid pot for now. I can definitely upsize it into something a little bit larger down the road. I probably could have went like one size larger, but I just, I really don't have uh, a pot larger than this, but it'll do fine in here for now. Um, the reason why I chose plastic is I don't want this alocasia drying out too fast. So I like to put a lot of my house plants into terracotta, but uh, for this one, I'm going to be using a plastic orchid pot. And it does have these slits on the sides that uh, just provides a lot of airflow. So it's uh, good for the roots. So I'm just going to hold this in the center and I'm just going to be dumping some soil just around, sorry, around the, uh, around the roots here for now. I'm not gonna pack it down. I don't wanna damage these roots, but just enough that it uh, remains upright like that. Actually, that went a lot smoother than I thought. I'm going to be giving this some water as well. The tough thing, or the thing to remember about taking plants out of this uh, perlite prop box is this is a, it's a very nice environment for these plants. There's lots of humidity, there's lots of moisture. And then when you take them out, it's basically like they have to uh, fend for themselves. It's a, it's a totally new environment. So less humidity. Um, I think right now it's, well, it's 52% downstairs here, but this uh, prop box, I would suspect would be, uh, you know, in the high, uh, in the higher ranges or in the higher percentages for sure. Okay, next up are the Diefenbachia Sterling. They don't have as large of a root system. Like it has some pretty decent roots, but um, I'm gonna be taking these out of the box anyways. I want uh, to put them in some soil and free up some space. This one has uh, a nicer root and it's got a new little growth point on the side here. So I'm just going to start by filling up this uh, plastic nursery pot. Now, these cuttings were basically a little bit of an experiment. I wanted to see how a Diefenbachia propagates. Uh, I put some straight up in soil and I laid these ones down. They both produced um, new stems uh, coming out the side like uh, near this uh, node here. So I'm actually gonna be potting them just like they were uh, horizontally here on the soil. So I'm just gonna add probably like that. And then I'm just gonna place these cuttings right on the soil like this, just so that the stems pop out. Actually, I might turn this one around a little bit. That way it looks like I have two plants nicely positioned with a third, like I said, that new little growth point. And then I'm going to cover up the uh, the stems there like this. So I don't know if this runs a higher risk of rot. Like I said, I've never done this method before. So this is all an experiment for me. So now it just looks like I have two nice uh, stem cuttings just popping out of the soil. Where's my pencil? I always lose my pencils. Okay, so being very cautious not to damage this new stem right there. I'm just going to poke down some of the soil. Is it even focusing? Do I have it close enough? Zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, it's 
it's a little bit better. Still learning this new camera. So far, I'm really happy with it. But of course, there's many more settings on this camera than say my cell phone. So one of the things that I'm learning, I guess still is the focusing features on this camera. It's pretty straightforward on a cell phone, but this one you have to do different settings. But anyways, so there, there is my Diefenbachia Sterling. Hopefully I don't kill this one. The pot size now looking at it might be a little bit too large, but that's okay. I just have to be cautious about how much water I give this plant. I don't want to like completely soak it or saturate it to the point where it uh, develops root rot. So I might, uh, since these stems or the roots are fairly close to the top of the soil, I don't have to like completely soak it so that it, uh, water comes out the bottom of the drain hole. I might just uh, give it enough water so that it um, just kind of wets the roots at the top here. Whoops, did I just squish that stem? Where is it? I definitely covered it up. Where's that new growth point? Yeah, I might actually use my spray bottle just to spray around the uh, soil there and that'll help settle it as well so I don't squish the, uh, the little stem. Okay, uh, I think that's it from this prop box. Let's move on to the next one. So I decided to use all nursery pots for these cuttings uh, just for the fact, like I said, they come from a high humidity, high moisture environment. So if you use like a uh, plastic nursery pot, this helps just uh, maintain the moisture levels because if you use a terracotta, terracotta is very porous, it's very absorbent. So it uh, likes to soak up the soil moisture and evaporate it out. Uh, so I'm just determining or deciding which pots to use for which plants. So this one has uh, some decent roots on it, but it's just a single cutting. I might pot this Polynera up in this uh, little bit of a larger pot. This one is a really fast growing Hoya for me when it's in higher light. And since I have three cuttings of the Carnosa, I'm actually gonna pot it in this container right here. Again, this is another fast growing Hoya variety for me. Okay, so let's set this aside. Now I'm going to do the Polynera here first. So when I pot up my Hoyas, like these single leaf cuttings, I, I like to use the edge of the pot as basically like a stabilizer if you can. So I this is actually a pretty decent level. Like I might bring it up a little bit, but I don't want it sticking way out of the pot like this and I don't want these leaves submerged. So I usually have just the base, like where this leaf node is, that's a leaf node right there. Um, I like to have that just slightly above the soil line. That way the leaves themselves don't rot. But eventually, um, hopefully soon, it will start to produce a, a new vine from this leaf node. And that's how I'm going to grow this into a larger plant. So yeah, just dump the soil in, making sure it's in the center of the pot, which it's not. There we go. I like to add the soil around the roots like this. Like I know a lot of people will fill up their pot and then they'll dig a hole. I like this method just because you can place it at the right height and then you can dump soil around the roots instead of digging a hole and then just like jamming all the roots down there. Sometimes um, the roots might break. This I find is just a, a nice easy way that doesn't damage the roots and you can position it much easier, I guess. Okay, so just lightly packing that down. Again, it doesn't have to be super packed. Just dump the soil in. I'm gonna actually take some of that out. It will settle a little bit once the, uh, the cutting is watered. Okay, now this one, it's a little bit trickier. So it's got a longer portion of the stem and it wants to fold up against the leaf. So I'm gonna have to, without damaging or tearing off the leaf, I'm just going to drape it on the edge of the pot and hold the stem in place a little bit further out from the leaf. And then I'm going to add soil in. This one I might pack down a little bit more just because I don't want uh, 
the stem to be moving or migrating around in the pot. This is actually a fairly nice size cutting because the cut end of the, uh, of the stem here at, at the bottom is, is just resting on the bottom and it's positioned nicely. Just gonna cover up those roots. Again, hopefully this one produces a new vine from this leaf node so that I can get more leaves on this one. Just something like that should be good. And I think the Carnosa here is the last one. If you are new to Hoyas and you are looking for a variety um, of easy care Hoyas or ones that are fast growing, the uh, Crimson Princess, the Crimson Queen, and just the regular Carnosa, they're a really good option if you're looking to get into Hoyas. So this one, just because uh, I'm adding a multiple cuttings into a single pot, I'm gonna be adding the soil first and then kind of positioning them, jamming these cuttings down in the soil, just a little bit easier to position them. I do, which one? Uh, I do have another Parasitica heart leaf upstairs and I do wanna combine those plants, but I guess an important thing to mention when you take uh, specifically like water propagated cuttings and you put them in soil, they can have a really um, tough transition or a tough time transitioning to soil as this is obviously a more condensed medium, whereas water, everything is readily available. It doesn't have to search out for moisture or anything like that. Um, so yeah, sometimes these cuttings can have a difficult time transitioning to soil. So what I like to do is, if I'm considering adding this cutting to an existing pot, I will start it in its own pot, transition it to soil, so basically what I'll do is I'll keep this uh, a little bit more on the damp side for about two weeks and then I'll slowly cut back on watering to its regular watering routine. So Hoyas, you don't want uh, to keep them soggy but you don't want them to get dry for too long. So I will um, transition this one to soil and then once it is starting to grow or once I see new growth, then I will uh, combine both those cuttings into uh, one pot if that makes sense. Okay, this is a little more difficult just because I have some orchid bark in here and hitting some resistance there. So probably got a chunky piece right there. So I'm gonna add this one right there. It's nice that there's only three, but if you want like a bunch of cuttings, if you want a nice full pot, you can jam in as many as you can fit. It doesn't matter, but you'll probably have to repot it quicker than you normally would just because of the amount of cuttings that you have in the, in the pot. Now I'm just rambling. I tend to do that a lot. I just get talking, get... Okay. So this will look fairly bare for the, for the first few months, but once these stems start to produce uh, their own new vines, then you can, it'll fill in quite nice. Okay, so this one is a little bit trickier here. So I'm just gonna dump the soil in. This guy's giving me some problems. There was a little piece of orchid bark. Okay, so I'm gonna pack that down, pack this one down. And then this has just a very small stem with some uh, pretty, pretty small roots. So this one, you can just stick it anywhere and just push it down. So they're all secured. I'm just gonna add a little bit more soil to these guys. Take that big chunk out. Just kind of shake it down a little bit here. Make sure these roots are covered up because like I said, you don't want them to dry out while they transition to soil. You can use a pencil, a stick, or like a bamboo skewer just to poke down any air pockets. You can just fill it with soil around the roots, help settle it down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to get my little spray bottle and I spray these off, give them a good thorough watering, and that is it. They all fit nicely in this little tray. This is my uh, little just utility tray. I use it for watering lots, but I have this uh, little pump action uh, spray bottle. I often get asked what brand this is, and it's from Walmart, it's like $4. There isn't a brand name on it. It's just a garden pump and spray. It's a one liter or 2.2 uh, pints. This I find super handy. This is one of my most used plant tools, and I just, I'm gonna be spraying off the leaves here, just clean them off of any dirt. Let's zoom in. 
it has different settings like it's basically got a higher stream or it's got like a mist setting so you can adjust it so normally I just clean off the leaves and then just get the top of the soil and then I'll uh, I guess water it with a watering can afterwards uh, these guys I'm just going to lightly mist the top of the soil here just like that give this one a little bit more water like I said I'm not going to soak this one just because I don't want it to uh, develop root rot Let's spray off the Hoyos here and then here is the little alocasia making a huge mess on my table here I don't quite know where I'm going to put this uh, Alocasia Silver Dragon. I might keep it downstairs, but uh, the ones I have upstairs are doing really well in that location, so I might bring this one upstairs. Uh, same with this uh, Parasitica Heartleaf, uh, the Hoya, I might bring that one up. This uh, little Diefenbachia Sterling is going to stay down here. This Carnosa might come upstairs, and this Polynera, I'm actually going to keep it underneath uh, these grow lights right here. This is my Hoya Potsii. It's doing super good underneath the, this grow light. It's getting a new stem. This is a previous propagation as well. Um, it really likes this location and it um, really likes this uh, grow light. It's uh, fairly close. It's even getting some sun stress on one of these uh, new leaves. I'm just gonna show here. It's getting a bunch of new growth. Um, I think there's four cuttings in this pot so all these little new growth points off of those uh, leaf nodes that's uh, doing really good so i think that's where i'm going to keep them and hopefully they all survive and transition nicely to soil so i think that's going to be pretty much it for this video if you have any comments or questions please leave it down below welcome to all my new subscribers and thank you to my returning viewers all my followers I really appreciate the support. Take care, everyone. Bye.